it's spoiler in time. This is the show where we watch shows and talk about the shows. We have Cord Killers, where we talk about how to watch the shows, and here, where we actually talk about the shows we watched. This week, we'll be talking about The Righteous Gemstones, Season 3, Episode 6, Secret Invasion, Season 1, Episode 4, and Miami Vice, Season 4, Episode 12, The Cows of October. I'm Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. Would it be fair to say that our main show is about the hunting and gathering, and this show is pretty much a, uh, uh, oh, what's the Japanese term for when you're live streaming yourself just eating food? Uh, muk- mukbang. Well, the Korean, the Korean term is mukbang. Welcome, welcome to content mukbang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, the, <laughs> I like that. This is this is TV mukbang. Uh, le- our first dish is the righteous gemstones. Uh, we're back into the present of the story. Uh, the cousins have been waved a, a hearty goodbye and given a monster truck. Uh, Judy, on the other hand, is, is struggling with BJ, who is upset at the revelation of her infidelity. Uh, and, um, dad just wants to fish and, uh, he, he, he can't believe that his kids are doing this. And we kind of, I get, think gave the short shrift in our, our discussion last week. Uh, we get ho- holographic, uh, mom, uh, ready, ready to sing some songs, uh, much to the disgust of Eli Gemstone. Yeah, I, I guess we'll start with holographic mom. Um, I, I, I'm willing to squint and as I explained to my kids, it's like, okay, well, there is kind of this trend of, you know, like, I, I believe there's a show in Las Vegas that is Whitney Houston in concert, air quotes, uh, and it's just, it's all Pepper's ghost illusion. Pepper's Whitney Houston. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, uh, uh, but uh, they represent it in a way that uh, is a little bit sci-fi for this show, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and not exactly accurate, but it is accurate. It, it felt in- like the there were writers who did not understand technology who were like well this isn't sci-fi this is just exaggerating the technology the the way we exaggerate everything and and uh, and i think they would be right in that it was a little bit distracting for me but but in order to solve it you would have to get farther into to the technical yeah, weeds yeah. than i think the would benefit the show right yeah, and they they weren't going to get into Pepper's Ghost or any of that. They're just going to go holograms. Am I right? Technology that overpromises and is glitchy and never works. Am I right? And yes. that's for most of the audience is fine. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I think we know who the star of this episode was. Let's let's give it up for the beach. Uh, that was an amazing. Uh, can, can we start with the best part of this entire episode? It, what, what did you think the best part was? Uh, the best part was uh, 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 <laughs> when BJ <laughs> is training in a Fight Club environment, and he says out loud, <laughs> "He's not even that upset about being cuckolded." But it's by a guy named Steven. <laughs> and so and so he trains up and then he gives the sucker punch. And boy oh boy, was I not prepared for Steven fully naked to just jump up for an extended 10-minute fight sequence uh, uh out in the lawn. Uh it was really great. At some point, one of my daughters shouted, why is he still naked? And I just cackled, because it's funnier. It was really funny. Right? It, it was really it funny. It was because really of- funny. <laughs> like, damn, they're still showing us his boys, huh? <laughs> I know. Damn. I know. <laughs> Damn! It was good. And, and uh, uh, the 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 whole uh, flip flop of like uh, BJ being the one trying to do the sucker punch, and then you know him getting his butt kicked all the way into the front lawn while the guy is just there. And meanwhile, I'm thinking about you know Hollywood production stuff. I was like, this actor knows this is the greatest role and the greatest moment of his entire life. I bet he worked out for months so that he could look good for this one moment where he's gonna do a protracted fight scene, totally naked. Uh, And then, uh, so BJ goes down, and I don't know if this is a story I've uh, uh, shared here before, but but, um, there was a Beastie Boys conference, uh, conference, uh, concert, where uh, crowd surfing was strictly prohibited. And if anybody was crowd surfing, then you would be ejected immediately. And, if you went to a concert 
in the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, it, basically, it's kind of a game of trying to figure out, you know, how close to the front of the stage you can get. A uh, couple of guys didn't like how much I was trying to get to the front of the stage. And so they say out loud, let's crowd surf him. And they reach forward and they grab my body to lift me up. But because their hands are on my body, my hands instinctually shoot and clasps, uh, clasp both of their necks. It was completely instinctual. <laughs> <laughs> and then we all just stared at each other for a moment. And that is what I felt like when BJ comes to after being knocked out and wakes up and realizes there's one move I have right now. And he grabs uh, uh, the, the most tender Steven. of bits <laughs> on Steven at that moment. It was really great. Is This show so good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, you did not? I was bored by this episode. What? <laughs> yeah. I kept tapping, like, how many more minutes do we got? Like, oh, okay, we're going to have the funny naked fight. Okay, I'm sure people find that funny, which you did, uh, you and that's fine. Uh, I, I I, found this to be one of the the longest episodes of Righteous Gemstones I've watched. You Doesn't mean it was bad, but there always has to be one episode that's not as good, and that was this one for me so far. You didn't, you didn't like the whole Keith and, and Kelvin discussion. You didn't like the <sighs> fact that Kelvin's new BFF is somebody of a wildly different body type who surprised us by being cool as hell. On I kind of like that. I kind of like that aspect of it. Yeah. The, the Keith stuff felt predictable a little bit, uh, but it wasn't bad. I like, I like that, that, that interchange just fine. That was even a good scene too, where he's like, like you know, he's accusing the new the new lady of like, she's exactly like me. <laughs> yes, like yeah, not no, that was great. I like that part. Um, also, hey, you know, uh, I'm gonna say I think this Judy Gemstone storyline is doing very well. I thought it was very sweet the ending where where she's talking with Martin and he's. You know, he's like, he, he kind of gave the, so the distraction. I, I thought that was really, really sweet in a way that this show sometimes isn't. They think it's on Tuesday. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. It's right. It was great. That it was, was great. It was very nice that Martin did that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, you know, we, we, they have to take that away from us because we can't have nice things. Um, we are still in a place where we have the outstanding latent threat of the ammonium nitrate, whatever. Right, we see it getting mixed and everything. Yeah. So uh, here's something. Oh, and the cousins—they're—they're they're double liars, because remember they—they they accepted the gift, wrote it in, and then when Dad's like, "You stole this," they're like, "Oh, yeah, we better say we stole it." Yeah, we stole it, and then they're heroes. What? And that's the question: Is uh, did they Where say did that the because they knew it would one? please Dad, and meanwhile their hearts really are with the gemstones, or? Were they, you know, faking out the gemstones the entire time because I think they needed. did steal that as well? I think that the the implica I, I think the implication I am drawing about the cousins is that they are very changeable. They are not forward thinkers. They're not planning ahead. They're in the moment. And that is going to be Pete's undoing is at some point the cousins are going to have to make a choice and they're not going to make the choice that they, that Pete would like them to make because in the moment they're going to think, Oh, well, I don't want to do that to Jesse. He was cool and gave us the, the, the monster truck or something like that. I 100% agree. As a matter of fact, the fact that they made a moment of Jesse saying, you know, uh, I went too far. I, 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 I was too generous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that feels like a, signal that they're going to come back home uh also we have that scene in front of a literal uh, uh live love pray or live life pray uh live laugh love yeah live laugh love uh, uh, where we had a negotiation between jesse and his wife uh to be oh. honest oh. that all read to me as jesse is as close as we've ever seen him to being a decent person. And of course, that's when he would be the least comfortable. And that's why he would, you know, just lash out randomly 
at his wife about the system and so on. Yeah, yeah. No, I I feel like that's building towards some kind of fulfillment of the flashback. Uh, we spent a lot of time in the flashback with uh, Judy and Jesse's wife uh, having their interaction explained to us uh, and how, how Judy looked down on her and all of that. Uh, we are now in this episode seeing Judy benefiting against her, her better judgment, uh, benefiting from the system and, and actually reading it and trying to pretend like she's not. Uh, and so I, I feel like in the previously on of either the next episode or the episode after that, we're going to see that flashback. We're going to see some part of that interaction from the flashback episode that will bear on the current situation. Bonnie noticed that when things were heated between Jesse and his wife, it seemed like Jesse's wife tilted back into her Southern accent. Uh, mm, the the mm -hmm. one that, that she appears to have fought hard to leave to behind minimize. her. Yeah. 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 Um, anything else on the righteous gemstones <sighs> for the first time, for the first time I looked at the next week on and started to speculate. It's, it's that's how good the show is. You know, I hate all of those and I don't watch any of those except well, for I did. Except how you did. Yeah. Yeah, I love those. And, and, and it, it, it's fun. You know what the other thing is? I can't remember what was in the next next week. But you don't Me have to say. Me neither. Because that's not part of this. <laughs> that is The Righteous Gemstones, Season 3, Episode 6. Let's talk Secret Invasion, Season 1, Episode 4. Brian, what happened in this episode? My goodness, Tom. Uh, look, I, I, I don't like to admit this in public, but I watched this show twice. And I still barely remember what happened. So we find out his wife is a scroll. Yes. She gets talked into trying to assassinate him. We have the like showdown at the dinner table. They both pull their guns out. They shoot. They both intentionally don't hit the other person. And now they're teaming up against their mutual enemies. Also, Rhodey is a scroll. The uh, uh, or or at least uh, you know it, it, I'm willing to accept that Rhodey is off on some other planet and just not around and and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, no, the Rhodey we're seeing is a scroll. We don't right. know where the real Rhodey uh, is. Yeah. Also, they go out of their way to show off the super scroll idea. Um, this, this, to be honest, Tom, this is, it's hard for me because I read the original comic books and. This is not that story, you know. It's it's um. How how off is it? Is this wildly? Is this a this is a completely new? They're not even hitting the same plot points, or is this just a really unique adaptation of it? Would it bring me into what the translation error is here? In the comic books, the entire secret invasion was the idea that what if everything you believed was a lie, and there were bad bad actors. Uh, you know, instilled in so many roles that you loved and respected. Mm -hmm. This, from the beginning, and maybe maybe this is why uh, 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 Captain Marvel didn't land for me. Uh, maybe it, it's the refugee story of the scrolls or whatever. This is a, a complete upside down, backwards. Uh, topsy turvy story of of what if all these uh refugees eventually decided after the fact to be bad um it, it's 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 very frustrating because i i i, I don't know what the metaphor is what, and 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 my favorite stories are for example uh the blip uh, was 911 right it was a terrible disastrous thing five years past people are processing what happened i get that that's concrete i can hold on to that i i i don't know what they're doing here and and i'm upset with the way the order in which they're yeah doing. yeah so it, it feels like you have a certain set of expectations and you're willing to entertain some deviations from them but this is way too many deviations well and I, I, I will hold out the possibility that maybe they'll land the plane on this one, but I don't know. What, it seems to me like the right way to land the plane at this point is to uh, reveal, air quotes, the fact that all the scrolls are bad, and that's what leads to the next franchise and what have you. 
Yeah, I, I, do, I don't expect that. I have no familiarity with the source material, uh, so I am not bothered by any of that. The, the story they're telling seems to be, to me, uh, what if an oppressed people had a section of them decide to overthrow the current order? Uh, that's a pretty direct metaphor. Uh, but what if instead of uh, just overthrowing it from the outside, they could be on the inside without people knowing? So it's it's a it's an elevation of like, yes, this happens in real life, but what if they had the superpower of doing that? So that that's how I look at the story that's being told. What happens with each of these episodes is when I'm done, I feel like, oh, I like the story they're telling. I like the, that uh, we're seeing Nick Fury on the outside, uh, be, you know, trying to fight a big power uh, with an ally from the oppressed group who's trying to convince them to do the right thing. Uh, all, I'm all for that. Every episode, I also can't remember what happened that episode. And I have to go back and refresh my memory. And even then, I still can't refresh. I, I still can't remember. It just isn't sticking. It's not something where I'm watching on the edge of my seat. I'm, I'm really thankful that I'm not the only one who can barely remember each episode, even out though I watch it twice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but 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 uh, I, I I do like the fact that they're setting up Super Scroll. Super Scroll, if you don't read the comic books, is kind of an arch nemesis of the Fantastic Four. So I understand that this is leading us to where we eventually get to my favorite comic book of the entire Marvel lot. Um, uh, but boy, could could you take a less boring route to get there? Uh, I, I I just. I, 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 I wish I had more to say. I wish I wish I was angry at this. Mm, mm -hmm. I, it's weird because it's it's fine to watch. Like I watch yeah. it and I go like, yeah, this is this is like yeah. pretty good for a globe trot shoot a thon. You know, mm -hmm. Samuel Jackson's pretty good. The the action's like pretty good, uh, uh, but um, meh. What a what a mild surprise that he's married to an alien. I, I, or yeah, it's just, it, I don't know. I'm, I don't, I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about this. You, you mentioned that like, and, and, and your man, Jeff, Jeff in our chat said that this leads to a number of other shows and movies and things like, Hey, it feels like that. Yeah. Like, why do we need to do that? Why do we, you know what? Maybe just bring us to the next big thing. I don't know. I'm like, uh, I'm at the point where I don't need a cinematic universe for you to tell me this story. It's not that complicated. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I feel like that that's a really good point about this series in particular, uh, which is that it seems to be a simpler story than they're taking the time to tell. Uh, and like we've had the situation where something that was supposed to be mo a movie got told over many episodes and it feels like it. We've had the situation where something that was supposed to be told as a movie is told over several episodes and you're glad they did it over several episodes instead of cramming it into a movie. This feels like, an episode or two of a TV show being told over six episodes. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to hold out hope that they're going to surprise me, but only a little bit of hope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, at least I don't mind. It's not like I sit down like I have with some of the other shows uh, and been like, Oh, I guess I have to do my duty and watch Falcon and the winter soldier. Uh, this, this, feels like something where I'm like, okay, you know, I like the way it looks. I like some of the acting, like you say, I think Samuel Jackson's great in it. Um, and I never feel like I'm wasting my time watching it. It just, it's not sticky. Maybe it doesn't need to be. Maybe it's the Miami vice of Marvel. Uh, 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 no, Miami vice is so much better. Uh, <laughs> uh, Meat master points out like, how did you feel about Talos's demise? And it's like, I didn't believe it. Like, I don't believe anything in this well, show. Well, because we opened the episode with Talos's daughter coming back from the dead. Uh, and so they did a lot to convince us that Talos is really, really dead this time. But I'll be honest, Beatmaster, kind of forgot he died until you said that in the chat. Uh, <laughs> that's the problem. When you establish that everybody's made of rubber, you react as though everybody's made of rubber. Yeah. And maybe that's me. Maybe I should be paying closer attention. Uh, but, but yeah, it did not 
it did not stick. It did not hit me. And maybe partly because I didn't believe it. I don't know. Uh, anything else on Secret Invasion? No, I'm I'm skeptically crossing my arms and continuing to watch it begrudgingly. That is Secret Invasion, Season 1, Episode 4. Let's talk Miami Vice, Season 4, Episode 12, The Cows of October. Oh, my God. We have a Texan uh, <laughs> who is selling uh, horse semen, perfectly above board business, but the, the valuable container is stolen and the feds come in to try to stop it, uh, led by Harry Shearer, who this is exactly why I wanted to do guest episodes. And Harry Shearer wasn't even noted in the guest episode list that I looked at. I found this just by looking at guests. It was like, wait, Harry Shearer is in this? He's talking in the voice of Principal Skinner. How uh, great. I don't How know great. if that's just... Like, all I want to do is play this episode in the background and see who notices that that Principal Skinner is in a Miami Vice episode. I don't know if that just says Principal Skinner's voice is very close to Harry Shearer's natural voice or if this is Harry Shearer's person in authority voice or what. But yeah, it 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 was very very recognizably uh Skinner-esque. Uh and and Harry Shearer I thought did a did a fine job otherwise. A bit of a comic weird character for the script though. Uh I actually thought this was a better episode by the end than uh, around the 30 uh, 50% than- mark. I, I I was like, oh, what is this? But by the end, I was like, I actually think this was quite good because it. Uh, uh, <laughs> Bryce is shocked. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 and I'm, I'm going to tee it up. Okay. You guys comment on <laughs> okay, it. Okay. Okay. Um, during the 1980s, there was a trend of. Uh, Perceived arbitrage. Uh, arbitrage is a gap between, you know, like if you just do blank, 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 and blank, you could cut out the middleman and do blank, 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 and blank. And w- during, probably during the time this came out, uh, I remember feeding ostriches and feeding emus because one of my friend's dads was involved in one of these schemes where you would buy ostrich or emu eggs or whatever and raise them so that you could cut out the middleman and do the whatever. So not only was there this bull semen cold war (laughs) uh, story that they were telling, but on top of that, I remember seeing, I want to say around 1984-ish, there uh, there was a show called uh, Riptide and they did a similar plot line about horse semen, uh, about, about uh, uh, thoroughbred horses. Um, I don't know what the cultural gestalt was behind all of this, but I know that this brought me back to my childhood, and I rather dug it, and it does exactly track one for one on all of the uh, uh, classic tropes of a con man story uh, uh, up to and including our our you know weirdo character uh, always looking for an opportunity i at first thought that they were being unusually uh generous to the texan character i'm like you the, at this point that character should have been a total joke and then dismissed and gone with. And I'm like, why are, why are we giving him some respect? Even though we're doing the characterized accent and the cowboy hat and the over the top stereotypes, we're giving him some, some intelligence. We're giving him some credit. We're involving him in the story, uh, which led me to realize, you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes in like, Oh, he's not from Texas. That's why. And we're going to find out something about him. And of course we find out that he's a con man. uh, And by the end of the story, he's speaking in an upper crusty British accent uh, stereotype uh, on the plane to wherever they're going at the end there. I mean, that's I'm I'm trying to figure out a way to work in. That's right. He's not from Texas. Uh, uh, <laughs> Texas did not want him anyway. That's the only difference between that. Song. I did the, love the scene where uh, I, I I don't know if it was Trudy or or the other uh, uh, officer where it's like uh, uh, one of them had you know very clearly uh, had a encounter with him sexually oh yeah Gina, and then, yeah, yeah and then meanwhile uh switek uh had very clearly got got and 
sunk in money on his investment, trying to be a little bit on the uh, the gray side of things. Uh, I, I thought that's I thought I, I'm sorry. I thought this was a great episode. I thought this it was is amazing. By far the worst episode of Miami Vice <laughs> I've ever seen. I, I I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I, I this recognize is, that we're way out in the weeds on this one. There is not. You couldn't tell me this is the same Miami Vice show from however many seasons before this. This is a show where people like overdosed and died. This was a show where people were. were drug running and it was serious we remember we went to the islands we left miami what five you, minutes you you got five minutes of crockett and tubs that's how much was in this episode oh yeah <laughs> you got none of that I'm like like uh, uh, go ahead collect yourself Bryce. yes we, we we got time we're here for you i'm gonna uh, i took i took a lot of notes <laughs> you did? Wow. that's like Five phone screens worth of notes. I took a first off. This episode was longer than this week's Righteous Gemstones. Just so everybody realizes how we've all right. spent our time this past week. Yes. Um, this it's a parody. It's a parody of it itself. Is. It is. I mean, it's it's it, it, like literally they must have just written this because they were like new FCC guidelines that let you say semen and sperm on on TV, right? Like. That could explain the That's, the riptide of it all. I, 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 yeah. and, and again, like I spent thirty minutes. Like, did I hallucinate this riptide episode? And then riptide's a totally different show, though. It's people fighting crime on a boat in California. Yeah, with uh, unlike Magnum PI or Airwolf, they don't have a cool helicopter. They have a Magnum PI helicopter because Magnum PI is in Hawaii. Yes. Okay. Remember when they did the uh, the telephone negotiation bit and Moreno, <laughs> for some reason, Moreno's just the main character of the show now? Yes, I, I, I rather enjoyed all of this. So far, I have yet to hear a bug. Everything is a feature. <laughs> just saying, this show is also called Miami Vice, but I argue it is much but different than some of the earlier programs with you on that, Bryce. I think I enjoyed it more than you did, but I watched it thinking, this is not a Miami Vice script. I'm not <laughs> sure how this made it into the Miami Vice production schedule, uh, but it's funny. It's it's it It's got comedy, and, and I'm with Brian that as it went along, I'm like, you know, for a not Miami Vice episode, this is pretty good. This would make a great Riptide episode. Uh, but it, yeah, it stuck out to me how very not Miami Vice this story was. Also, Tom, especially with Harry Shearer playing the Fed, doing, doing Principal Skinner's voice a year before The Simpsons comes out. Yes. Uh, also, losing the negotiation and admitting that the U.S. government can't afford five hundred thousand dollars more. <laughs> yeah. But then just stealing it, and then all, the tanks are all of them. None of them are real but then of course none of them are real it's a fraud of course not one of them is real i, I yeah. found this on the wiki and tom i gotta say you know how to pick them this episode <laughs> along with missing hours and the big thaw frequently tops fans worst episode lists uh, two other episodes we've seen recently uh missing yeah. hours the ufo james brown one and the big thaw there i'm so glad we didn't miss these <laughs> well, we, we got the <laughs> I like this what this is this also, I will say like it is a good bad episode. It's a fun <laughs> bad episode. It's a good bad episode. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's not a good episode of Miami Vice, like you said, in in a tradition of Miami Vice dealing with tough issues yeah. in broadcast television in the 80s. Uh but it was enjoyable. It was fun. Well, should, and, and keep it in mind it should be Miami Vice, but it was fun. For, uh they need but, to have like Miami Vice stories. <laughs> Or my, this my is Magnum PI or Riptide or something like I or or this, the Twilight Zone or you name it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. like they're just so independent narratives. Um, I I I don't know. It, it's like <laughs> uh, the the moment that what's his name says, "Let me conference you," and then he sixty nines the phones together and then starts shouting out half points, United States, and so on. <laughs> I, I, it, like I, at that point, I detached from Miami Vice reality yes, and instead engaged with the the mega narrative that they were telling, which is uh, some people take advantage of arbitrage. 
Also, yeah, also, I, where was Sonny and Crockett during the uh, time? Did Crockett just get married? Where we just, where we, where are we He's busy. Go? He's busy with Gina. He's busy. His new oh. wife. Yeah. That's just. Uh, he's got he's got redecorating to do and none of list, thank none you of the, like none of the westerns like the the Ooh, long that's right they scores the, the, yeah like wah, wah, wah. <laughs> maybe that was a if, if, maybe that plays I don't know maybe that's more interesting back in 1988 I they had a truck that was on rails they had the truck on the <laughs> Oh, right, for the drop. I that, totally forgot about the truck on rails. The in most incomprehensible. We've got Moreno on the truck, and he's just like, he's doing flag semaphore for some reason. And but people are flashing lights. <laughs> and then he, he just gets a joke about close encounters of the third kind. Yes. <laughs> oh, he also, what was the. Uh, he gets uh, robbed uh, blind. Hold on. I made a, I made a note. Hold on. <laughs> He uh, he's, he mentions uh, at one point he mentions I don't think it's in that scene but someone says Clockwork de Naranja which was there we so go good. Clockwork yes, Orange clockwork he de says naranja. Clockwork na Naranja <laughs> Uno Clockwork Naranja <laughs> actually forgot that I made notes for this one too I couldn't, ah, I couldn't ah, I mean, we all made the same note <laughs> oh my god I took this it's, note no, oh my it, god it it's good. still going. <laughs> <laughs> they played the theme from Gunsmoke yep. at one point. Yep, yep. They wake, make a weird joke about Bo Jackson not being able to hit a curveball. Oh, that's right. And 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 that was before. And and then they make kind of an eye roll in there. They used the Morricone "Good, Bad, and the Ugly" theme earlier. Yeah, mm -hmm. but 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 like uh, when they did the Bo Jackson joke, I guess that's back when Bo Jackson was more baseball and less football, but it was before the Bo Nose theme. Yes. Um, and then they make a Casablanca reference at the end. Just full of random references. Uh, wait, 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 I, wait, they do like a negative version of it. It's like, of a beautiful this isn't friendship. the beginning of a long friendship yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh my God. There's a, there's a scene where uh, Tubbs and uh, uh, the co the comedy the comic relief cop are like learning Switech Switech are learning how cows work. They're just learning how to take care of a cow for no no discernible reason. Those are that's like four pages of the script that yeah. do not connect to anything and don't. We just set wanted anything. we wanted to show city slickers being oh. uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> just to be clear, I understand that all of these are very good reasons. To love this episode less, however, but I, I no, only yeah. love it more now. <laughs> and and may I submit one that I feel it would be uh, we would be remiss if we did not acknowledge that the main plot point of this entire episode is that the U.S. government wants to protect the secret for creating miniature cows <laughs> that produce a lot of milk it can be a, a solution to hunger and they need to keep it out of the hands of the Soviets of the communists. Yeah. <sighs> it's all about miniature cows. It's I, about small cows. And there's the like hilarious scene when they find the real photo of, of giganto or enormo or whatever. And he's like a very small bull. Yeah. This photo was taken at noon. This photo was taken at four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then he's only got the cropped image of the cow when he's showing it at the end of the at yep. the end of the episode. Bryce, I, th I think you've made a very, very compelling argument <laughs> that has only made me love this episode even more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I, it, I, you love it like you like the runt of a litter. Like, this is like an underdog of an episode. It's because adorable. It's so, yeah, it's, it's like a... Uh, it's like Grumpy Cat. Like Grumpy Cat kind of looks kind of looks <laughs> if funny. Grumpy but it's, Cat was a Miami Vice. But Grumpy Cat had <laughs> some physical Grumpy deformities. Cat the Miami Vice episodes. <laughs> there we go. That's it. That's it. Uh, that is all that we need to say about Miami Vice season four, episode twelve, The Cows of October. Now we will return to Miami Vice rewatching in a few weeks, but uh, we do have a new show entering the chat. The return of Justified. So next week, 
Justified City Primeval. I believe we're getting the first two episodes, season uh, one of City Primeval. So it's not a new season of Justified. It's because he's because he's in the city now. Uh, episodes one and two. And then we'll be talking about The Righteous Gemstones, episode seven of season three, and Secret Invasion, episode five. That's all coming next week on Spoiler in Time. If you're a patron, you get After Talk, where we talk about what's really going on with the plans for the shows. We talk a lot more about what shows to watch, including those rewatches like Mammy Vice. Uh, get that and get these episodes early. Patreon.com slash Cord Killers. We'll spoil you again next time. Cowdoy in the city. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>